So, welcome to another uh, integrated circuit video. Uh, this time we're uh, looking at the uh, 4051, which is an analog multiplexer and demultiplexer. Really interesting chip that I've been waiting a long time to do a video of. I actually went so far that I bought uh, the whole 4000 series on eBay. So, Gonna be interesting to take a look at those uh, uh, someday. But uh, when I went dumpster diving, I actually found one on a board. So uh, that was a huge score, and now I'm able to have a multiplexer and demultiplexer system. Uh, so uh, that's what I've uh, hooked up here today, at least uh, sort of. Uh, first, we can just take a look at, um, yeah, let's just take a look at this drawing here first. Um, this is the pinout. As you can see, you know, you have the positive and negative uh, supply. Nothing new there. Um, the, yeah, we can just take the set uh, first, uh, which is the output. Uh, you have A0, A1, and A2, which is the select uh, buttons or uh, pins. And then we have the different uh, I.O. pins, sort of. Or, uh, yeah, for example, all of these uh, um, Y, you send in analog signals based on the state of these buttons, high or low. As you can see on the uh, function table or through table on the bottom here, um, different uh, pins will be connected to the output right here. So, uh, as you can see, we have um, uh, A0, A1 and A2, and also an enable, which is just going to be uh, connected to ground. Uh, if all of these pins are low, Y0 is connected to set. And if uh, A0 is high, uh, Y1 is connected to set. So, it's much like one of those rotary knobs that you've all seen. Eight different uh, inputs based on A0, A1, and A2. Let's say all of them are zero. We have connection here. And then we take a switch and we put uh, A0 uh, to high, which is like 5 volts. Suddenly we have a connection here. And then what we can do is we can take that low again to zero and we can put the A1 to 5 volts. As you can see on the truth table, A1, 5 volts, A1, 5 volts, set 2. So that's connection here. It's, uh, yeah, it's that simple. And uh, yeah. If all of them are high, for example, we will have a connection to uh, Y7. So, uh, easy PC. But, what we actually can do is we can pull this line a little bit longer. We can put a set here. We can put seven outputs here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, sorry, I meant 8. And uh, we can pull these lines over here. And we can have another 4D51 chip here. So, if all of these are uh, controlled through these same switches, these wires will always be the same on the bo both chips. So, for example, as you can see, all of them are high, 5 volts that will say they are all 5 volts on this side as well. We will have a connection from here to there through the cable and because all of these are high we also have a connection down here. So what we've done is we connected uh, Y7 through uh, the chip through another chip and out here again. And that is the whole multiplexing, demultiplexing system because it also goes through one wire. So if we take away uh, all the fives, we put zeros, 
we have zeros on this side, 5 volt there, we'll get 5 volt there. And if you remember, 5 volts on A0 uh, zero will give uh, this connection, and because it's the same on both sides, we'll have a connection here. So uh, that's the whole deal here, that's what I've hooked up here. You can see my control wires going to the same pins. I have a 5 volt line here that I just connect. I have one analog wire going here from one chip to another. I have three pot meters. I have a little LED on the output here just to show you guys how uh, a little bit easier. And also I have a, a multimeter here to show you uh, the outputs. So uh, I guess we're ready to start the demo. So right now you can see, uh, yeah, it's a little bit dodgy uh, meter, but uh, yeah, we have a 0.45 volts ish, and that's on the output here. Um, so if we take a look at the schematic again, or pin out, we can see that uh, the Y0 is pin 13 on the chip, and that's the black wire here. So right now, none of these are high, that will mean this black wire will go through here. So if I turn this up, you can see the LED is starting to, to uh, glow, and that's on the output right here. And also, uh, because I have connected this to the fourth pin, this is connected to uh, where we are now. So you can see a little bit... Uh, different readings there, um, but uh, yeah, they are connected anyway. So for example, if I pull uh, A0 high, which is the uh, pin over here, and the black wire here, you can see that I lost my voltage here. And why did I, uh, why did I lose my voltage there? That's because I have now connected this pot meter to the output as you can see. But I still don't get a reading here. Why? Because I'm on another channel on this second chip here. So if I go from this channel to the next channel over here, you can see that now I have a reading on both meters. So uh, that's basically it. If I turn this down, it will go down on both of the, uh, both of the multimeters and also on the LED, as you can see. And, of course, I will pull A1 high. Sorry, A1 is up there. A1 high and the other low. That will give Y2 to set. So that's what I'm going to do now. You can see the LED went out. I have uh, no voltage. Oh, this connection here is a little bit bad and if I turn up the yeah apparently my meter isn't reading hmm wonder why that's because I'm on next channel that's right oh sorry. yep like that so now they read the same again interesting so, I always like to give some, uh, call it uh, real life application. And um, what I think is interesting about using two chips is that you can uh, transfer analog signals through three uh, digital wires and one analog. And um, yeah, that's really nice if you have, say, four. Uh, uh, a cable with four uh, wires. Um, also, if you have uh, sort of a uh, tank or a couple of analog signals that you want an alarm to sound if some of the sensors go over let's say 3 volts, you can just uh, hook up a timer to these uh, three uh, wires so that it cycles through all of the inputs and uh, when uh, the output hits um, a high voltage and alarm will sound. So instead of having multiple alarms 
you can just have one alarm and have this multiplexer in front of it. And then you can just go in with the meter when the alarm has sound, measure the voltage on the different pins and see where it, uh, or what sensor that actually tripped. And um, yeah, also uh, Arduino is uh, big uh, these days and uh, I've seen a lot of guys using them for uh, expanding the I.O. ports or analog ports uh, rather. Uh, just remember if you're doing that you actually need three digital wires. So it, it's not just that you get uh, suddenly get eight analog uh, values through one uh, input. You actually need to use these uh, three wires. But I guess that's not a problem because uh, the Arduino has a lot of uh, IOs. And um, yeah, that's uh, basically it for for uh, this video. Um, interesting setup, I think. Interesting uh, chip to talk about. And um, yeah, thanks for watching.